Hello and welcome to another video. So if you watched the last video, um, at the end of the video, I had to get home pretty quick because I had a delivery coming. And did I make it? No, I didn't. No. Um, <laughs> what happened was the postman actually hid the parcel in the garden. So I got the parcel, but I just kind of missed him. And here's my parcels. All right then. Well, what am I doing today then? So you probably read the, uh, the title of the video and realized I'm gonna change my solar charge controller because at the moment I've got a PWM controller. It's kind of like the cheap thing that comes with every single solar panel if you buy a kit, if you go for the cheap one, which I did and most people do. And they're really good, you know, it's served me pretty well. I've had it for years now, probably five, something like that. It's been fantastic. Um, but I've read quite a bit of things and people say, you know, MPPT controllers are better. Um, so I thought, yeah, it's about time to change it. But I was looking for a very specific kind of controller that did a very specific thing. Now, what is that thing that I want it to do? I always thought after it's charged up the uh, leisure battery, it's kind of sat there, not doing anything. And there's my main battery draining away as I'm opening the door. And you know, there's probably some little circuit that's on that's kind of draining it. And my, my main battery would drain down pretty quickly. After, if I didn't use it for two to three weeks, it'd start to get low. So I thought, is there a controller that does such a thing as charging up your main battery? And there is, I found one. It's here. <laughs> it's a dual battery solar charge controller. So I'll go into the specifics of which one I got. Yeah, so that is the main thing I'm gonna do today is uh, swap it out. Um, it's pretty easy to swap it out really, but I've got to run an extra wire to the controller obviously for the main battery so it knows which one it's looking at so that's the main thing to do plus I've actually got another extra addition for it which is I bought a remote meter um, because the thing this new controller is a lot bigger than my other one so it's not going to fit in the same space I've got to hide it somewhere first things first let's look at the controller okay so let's have a look at the charge controller that I've got here it is right so it is the photonic universe Charge controller, as you can see there. It's quite a big unit. Um, it's a lot bigger than one I've got at the moment. Um, I'll show you that in a second. But yeah, it needs to obviously have a little bit of cooling at the back. Um, but yeah, it's got like a tiny little LCD display. Now I'm gonna have to mount it somewhere different in my van to what I've got now because it's just that little bit too big and I won't be able to see the display. So what I've got as well is I got the extra little readout thing now this is quite cool because you can have this like quite it's quite a big surround I think that's a bit too excessive for me but it can actually be quite a slim line so I'm going to go for it with this one um, and it has everything you need in there it kind of tells you the state of both the batteries um, so it's quite a nice big display um, I'm going to have it up on like I say on the side up there and I think that's going to work out pretty good it's got quite a long lead that comes with it so go a big long lead I think that's like five meters which is more than enough what I need so that'd be pretty cool so all I've got to do now is actually install it so that's what we're going to do next so um, let's have a quick look at what I've actually already got I'll talk you through what I'm going to do okay so this here is my current charge controller it's very simple um, like I say it works really well I quite like what I like about this it does have two USB sockets here which are controlled by that button uh, which is pretty cool um, and you've actually got extra 12 volt um, outputs there but I never use them really but the USBs I did use just for my little lights which are surrounding up at the top there but I'll have to just figure that out and plug them into something else um, but yeah that's pretty good so if I get the other controller you'll be able to see like the difference in size so as you can see whoa that's like a lot bigger so I'm gonna have to get this mounted somewhere I'm thinking it's kind of just hiding it kind of inside the unit sort of down the back there because I've got plenty of space in there saying so, I've got the other display which I'm going to go put up there somewhere I think like I said I need to run this extra wire so I've got to bring another wire in from the main battery somewhere down there so I think that's the first thing I'll do so let's get putting that wire in and then we'll figure out where this is going to go So I already have a wire running from the leisure battery to the charge controller, which was already there, uh, but I need to run a new wire for the dual charging. So this is gonna go from the starter battery back to the charge controller. So as you'll see, I run the wire through, there's like a big rubber grommet, um, and I just pull the wire through there because I've already got cables coming through there and just pull the wire through. So once I'm happy that I've got the cable length that I kind of need there, I've got to put a fuse on the end there, so I'm just gonna leave that there for now, but I'm gonna route it 
actually down under the plastic trim that is the footwell there. And to do this, you kind of remove these two little kind of clip things. I broke my second one. Um, I forgot to video it, but I did completely break the second one. They're quite brittle, but they're such a tough step. It doesn't really matter. You just wrench it off once you take those clips out and you can now simply put the wire in. This is a really nice, easy way to put cables in from the uh, front of the van to the back. Okay, so to get the worktop off, I've got to quickly empty the footstool, take that out of the way, take the fridge out, and then I can get to all the clasps that, that unhook the top. So I'll quickly do that now. Okay, so the uh, little seat's out of the way, then it took me a couple of seconds, and now I'm just gonna get the fridge out. Sorted. Okay, I should just unclasp everything and take the worktop off. Just to show you what I'm actually doing, I don't know if I've ever shown you this before, but yes, I've got little clasps all the way around and I can just literally lift off the worktop really easily. Now I've removed the worktop, I've got access down the back there so I can um, install the charge controller down in there because I think that's the only space to put it. So I just need to get like a little panel and mount it down there. But I also can route the cable so I can put my new little meter up there. Yeah, that's definitely where I want it. I think I have to cut this hole out though. Perfect. Exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do, I'm actually going to put this on the wall, and I've realised that um, you can actually take this surround off. So you just kind of unclip it. I can just screw this straight onto there, and hopefully I'll be in business. So I'll plug that in now. There you go, that looks cool. That looks good, man. Okay, after doing a bit of sort of thinking about how I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna mount this to this piece of wood and that's gonna go down into there. And it's gonna be facing this way so I can see the display if I need to. So I'm just gonna start wiring it up just on here, I think. And I'm gonna start by tying all of the, uh, the negatives together and I've just come put them to this common negative on here. And then I can just send that off to the negative on the chassis and that's the way I'm going to do that. I think that's okay. There you go. Now I've isolated that from the uh, leisure battery so it's got no power to there now. But what I need to do next is actually cover up the solar panel because obviously the solar panel will actually be giving a little bit of current into there but I'm not sure it'll get into the system through there but when I take the wires out they will be live so I'm going to cover up the solar panel up on the roof. So the next thing I've got to do is connect all them connections back up to the charge controller and then I can put it in its place and uh, give it a test I think. Um, I've got to put the fuse um, onto the uh, the main battery wire, that's the, the other thing I've got to do, that, that's up in the, uh, the engine bay there. So um, I think I'll just get connecting these up to the charge controller first and then we'll sort out that fuse and then we can connect it all up in the right order because this has got to be switched on in the correct order because it does say in the manual you have to put it, the batteries on in the correct order and then the solar panels at the end so that's what we're going to do. So I've gone ahead and wired up the entire charge controller. I've put a fuse in line with the solar panel so I can quite quickly disconnect that or reconnect it. Um, and I've also put all the, the uh, negatives to the earth on the chassis there and that's looking good. So next thing I've got to do is just put the fuse onto that wire that's going to the starter battery. 
in the instructions it tells you to put the starter battery on first so I've got a fuse so I'm just going to put the fuse into that fuse holder that I just installed okay so I've put the fuse in the main oh okay yeah that's cool so that's saying 12.3 so as you can see this one's flashing because that battery is not connected yet so let's go connect that battery up oh yeah that's changed there we go so now I've got a display on there oh this looks cool there how flash does this look all right, so now we've got to put the solar panel on now. I've just got to put a fuse in there. Zero at the moment because I've got it covered up. So next thing we're going to do is take off the uh, the blanket off the solar panel. Yeah, so I've got a little sun symbol. So just having a quick look at this panel going now. Um, I'm going to peel this off. This is satisfying. Oh. Oh. Yes. Anyway. So it's really great that I can see my starter battery and it's it's already charged up like it's got an extra bar on it now already. So it's already doing the thing that it should be doing. Pretty happy with that. So as you can see, that's where the uh, charge controller is through the cupboard. So you can actually see the display. It, it is actually readable just from in here and I can still get to the connections if I need to. So it's nice that it's still accessible, which is cool. So the installation is complete now. I'm really happy with how it's gone in and it was pretty easy to do. Um, I had a bit of a faff obviously doing the cable and stuff like that, but overall I think that was pretty easy. And the display is really neat. I really like this, uh, this unit. Um, I didn't like the old display because it had like a blue LED and it was always so bright at night and you have to cover it up. But this one, you can actually just turn it on and off. I mean, one of the advantages I didn't actually mention earlier with the MPPT controller is the fact that in this country, in the UK, um, it will actually make better use of the solar panel because in colder climates it can get uh, actually a lot more power from a, a solar panel. Apparently about 20 to 25% more power on like cloudy days. It's just more effective with how it uses it. In warmer climates, I think a PWM controller is actually pretty much sufficient, but I think you just get a bit more options with these ones. Um, I think this display and everything is far superior. So um, yeah, I love it. I think it's fantastic. Another thing I could get is a temperature sensor and I could run a wire from the controller to the battery itself and that would actually uh, increase its performance of how it charges up your battery because you can see what temperature the battery is at. Um, so that might be an addition I put on another time. Um, but let's have another quick look at this display. I've actually had it running for quite a while now. It's actually the next day. Um, and as you can see, I've actually got my starter battery is already at full charge which is amazing um, and my leisure batteries as well i've actually got it on like a continuous scroll so it's continuously going through all the different um, settings and things like that but you can actually just change all these with these parameters here so you can just lock on to what you just want to look at and it's actually got a temperature thing on it but it's just like the ambient temperature as it said there 27 degrees so it's absolutely boiling inside here but really I think that's it. I think that's all I need to do with this uh, install. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was useful maybe to you. And um, oh yeah, don't forget if you like the t-shirts, like I said in the last video, I'll put a link in the description. If you do want to get hold of one, there's, I've got lots of designs. Um, but apart from that, I'd say thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Cheers.